welcome to the first Data Sandwich tutorial. My name is Sean Bodger, and I'll be taking you through a three part set of beginner tutorials that will show you how to use Shader Sandwich. This is part one. Now, before we get started, I want to explain how Shader Sandwich fits within Unity and its pipeline. Shader Sandwich, as you can probably guess, makes shaders, but what exactly are shaders? I'm sure you've used them before, but what exactly are the technical details of them? What do they actually do? Well, before describing shaders, I'm going to describe materials, because they have a somewhat symbiotic relationship. Well, let's go! So, materials define what parts of an object look like. They have many different settings, or as I'll call them, inputs, which alter different parts of their shader. These inputs can be textures, cube maps, colours, and several other things. However, the materials don't do any drawing, as they don't know what their inputs actually are. Shaders use the material's inputs to render the object by calculating lighting, showing textures, blending colours, adding reflections, etc. Without the shader, the material has no idea what to show. Should the texture be shown flipped? Should it be a reflection? Should it move? Should it be shown at all? Should the specular highlight be set to the colour, or should it be blended with the texture? The shader answers all these questions, however, it asks a few of its own. Like, what should I be drawing? Grass, bricks, or skin? What colour am I? What's my texture look like? These are what the materials answer. They work together to render the mesh. So by making custom shaders, you gain control over what the materials do. Do you want the colour to change over time through the colours of the rainbow? Maybe the texture should move like a waterfall. You can also do many more advanced things, like making the mesh itself wobble and animate, have a bright glow, or look like a hologram and glitch every so often. Things like that. So, for this tutorial, we're going to be starting off with a fairly simple shader. We'll be recreating the Legacy Diffuse shader, which is something that comes with Unity. You're probably wondering why we're going to be recreating a shader instead of making something unique. It's simply because the Legacy Diffuse shader is very simple to recreate, and it's a really good learning exercise. Don't worry, in the second part, things will get much more interesting. So, for now, we'll be recreating the Legacy Diffuse shader. The Legacy Diffuse shader has two inputs, a colour and a texture. The colour is blended with the texture in such a way that neither appear transparent, they get blended together instead. Alright then, let's actually make the shader. First things first, opening Shader Sandwich. Click on the Window menu item, and then select Shader Sandwich. So, this is Shader Sandwich, well, the opening screen at least. As you can see, you can create new shaders, open shaders, get help, and see some information. On the left are recently opened files, and on the right is a message of the day and some other news. <laughs> message of the day, more like message of the second week. Anyway, let's create our new shader. Just click New Shader, and then Start from Scratch. So, this is the Layers panel. Shader Sandwich uses the concept of layers, which get wrapped around the object, similar to how the texture gets wrapped around the sides of a cube. Each layer gets stacked on top of themselves. So, because of this, the bulk of the shader will be made here, so it's really good to get familiar with this screen. So, one last thing before we actually get started, is we're going to open up a preview window, which lets us see what the shader will look like as we create it. So, let's click on the Previews menu item, and select Open Preview Window. So, this is the preview window. This lets you get a good look at your shader as it gets made. You can rotate the cube by left-clicking and dragging, and zoom in and out by right-clicking and dragging. At the top, you can change what shape is being shown, turn on wireframe mode, and change the cube map backdrop, such as a kitchen, darkness, or just the default sky. I'm going to stick with that for now. So, one last thing. I know, I lied before, I'm sorry, but it's important. So basically, never do what I say. Well, okay, do what I say in general, but I mean, don't follow along exactly. Use different colours, use different numbers, things like that. Shader Sandwich is built to be experimental, so that way you can create all sorts of wacky shaders. You can mess around and nothing will break. If something does break, it's definitely not your fault. It's mine. I'm sorry. <laughs> but for now, it should all be good. So, yeah, use different colours. Experiment a bit. Alright, so, let's actually make the shader. Finally! So, first thing first, we're going to add our base colour. To do this, we need to add a layer. We're going to add a layer into the Diffuse channel, which controls the colour of the surface. To do this, just click the plus button at the bottom. Click. There we go, and you'll see the shader preview update and change colour instantly. You can change the colour it's showing by changing the colour setting. I'm going to make mine... a cool blue, I think. I'll stick with a cool blue. 
Yeah, something like that looks pretty cool. There we go. Okay, well, we've already got our color in. Let's have a look at our shader in the material panel. To do this, we've got to save it. So, just click File, and then Save As. I'm just going to call my shader Tutorial 1. Sorry, I tried to re-record this earlier. So, I'm just going to overwrite the shader I had, but create a new one on your computer. So, yes, and there we go, it's saved. So, I'm just going to drag Shader Sandwich and the preview window out of the way, so I can have a look at our shader in the Assets area. So, this is the shader. So, let's create an actual material so we can have a look at the shader. Right click, Create, Material. And call it whatever you want. I'm going to call mine Tutorial 1 Material. Okay, so now that we've created a material, we need to select our shader. Just go up into the shader setting, click it, and choose whatever you called yours. In my case, Tutorial 1. And hooray, it's got the correct color. However, you'll notice you can't actually change the color within the materials panel. Well, to do this, we need to tell Shader Sandwich to allow it. Alright, well let's bring Shader Sandwich back up then. So, to add an input for the color, we need to tell Shader Sandwich to add an input for the color. To do this, you're going to want to click on the blue gear that's next to the color setting. Click. This is a miniature inputs panel. It lets you create inputs. So, click the plus button. This will make the gear turn orange. So what this has done is it's turned the color into something that can be edited in the material panel. Once we save, it will show up there. So, let's hit File, then Save, and there we go, it's in the material panel. You can now alter the color quite happily. Cool, okay, well the color's done. Time to add a texture. We're going to add a new layer, click, and you'll notice it will overwrite the old layer. Don't worry about that for now, let's just make it display a texture. So, at the top you'll see a bunch of settings for what the layer actually represents. It can be a gradient, it can be noise, it can be all sorts of different things. In this case, we just want it to be a texture. So, select the texture option. Click. So, you'll see a bunch of settings underneath change. Now, before we select a texture, we need to click on this exclamation mark here. This is a warning by Shader Sandwich. It's telling us that something's wrong. Don't worry, it won't crash your computer or anything. It's just a reminder about something. So, let's click on it. It says, Textures and cube maps require an input to function correctly. Would you like to add one automatically? This is because both textures and cube maps are both set within the material panel. Without that, they just all appear white. So, let's just click yes. The gear will turn orange, representing it has an input, and now we can select a texture. So, Let's click select, and I'm going to select a texture which comes with Shader Sandwich, called Icon Mask. Or as I call it, Little Dude Texture. Alright, well we now have our texture. The next thing we need to do is make it blend with the color correctly. To do this, I'm going to have to explain a few things. So, when you have two different colors, there are different ways to blend it. Shader Sandwich has a bunch of different blending modes, which are similar to blending modes found in GIMP or Photoshop. If you've used any image editor, you'll probably understand what these do. Basically, the colors are represented by numbers. There are different ways to blend the numbers together. The main way is Mix Mode, which just interpolates between the two colors. Try dragging the mix amount to see what I mean. On one end, the old layer is shown, and on the other end, the new one is. In between, the two are just mixed together. Now, the problem is, it makes the texture look transparent, so this clearly isn't the mix mode we want. Drag the mix amount back up to the top so we can experiment with the other layer modes. So each of these simply use the color numbers in different ways. For example, add blend mode adds the colors together. Subtract blend mode subtracts them. And finally, multiply blender mode multiplies them together. This is the blend mode we want, as it multiplies them. White times blue becomes blue, while black times blue becomes black, and all the other colors multiply in similar ways. This creates fairly predictable results. Alright, we're almost done. Final thing is to hit File, and then Save. Hooray, we've created our first shader. You can now use it in Materials, and select textures, change colors, and do whatever you want. Cool. Well, that probably wasn't very exciting, was it? We just recreated the shader we had. Well, in that case, hop on over to the next tutorial then, where things will get much more interesting. We're going to add a cool looking glow around the edge of the object called a rim light. Okay then, see you there.
If you have any questions or want to leave any feedback, feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully this all made sense. See you guys later.